Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to part 35 of a 37 part series of tutorials in computer structure and programming in C and Pascal. This is section one of two in the topic file handling. My name is Meme GM, but you can simply call me Emily Swap. In this tutorial, I'm going to look at the importance of file handling, the types of files, file organization techniques. We shall also look at file design. So what is the importance of file handling? Files are storage locations in which data is stored external to the main memory for future reference and modification. So, the information is maintained external to the program environment in the form of files. In many of the programs, data is supplied at the time of execution from keyboard, which is usually a standard input device. However, scientific engineering and business problems often deal with large volumes of data and therefore, the main limitation of this approach is that it is very difficult to handle large volumes of data. These limitations can be overcome by storing the data in a disk file called a file. With the use of files, data can be stored permanently on a secondary storage medium, for example, hard disks, compact disks, flash disks, amongst the others. In this case, the data stored can be read into the main storage whenever needed for processing purpose. So it is in files that data is stored for future reference. The data can be read from a file into a program whenever needed. That is, data is input into the program from a file or data can be written from a file, or that is from a program. Data can be written from a program that is output into a file for future reference. Usually, a file is therefore a collection of similar or related records. For example, concerning details of students in a class. File programming is writing of programs that store their data and information in secondary storage devices and retrieve the data and information when needed. Sending data from the main memory or just from the program into the disk for storage, that is into a file, is called writing into the file. While retrieving data from the file into the main memory to be used by the program is known as reading from the file. Both are known as outputting from the file and inputting from the file, respectively. The main file handling activities or operations are reading from the file, writing into the file, adding data into the file, creating a file, deleting a file, modifying a file, and a copying a file. Let's look at the types of files. In programming, files can be classified in three main ways. These are according to the way records are accessed. And under this category, we have the following types. Sequential files and random access files. Then, according to the way data is stored. The main types of files in this category include the text files and binary files. The third method or the third way is according to the mode of use. The main types in this category are input files, output files, and input versus output files. So what are sequential files? These are files in which records are arranged in a sequence 
In the order in which they are written to the file, and it can only be accessed in the serial order or sequentially. A sequential file consists of a list of records of the same data type, which is specified in the declaration of the file. The number of records that a file may contain need not be specified when the file is declared. However, only one component, that is one record of a file, is directly accessible at a time. So the other components have to be accessed by advancing sequentially through the file. Data stored in this file can only be read in the order in which it has been written into the file. These files are used more commonly in bunch processing than in interactive processing. So the main advantages of these files include they are easy to handle, they involve no overhead. Data in them can also be sorted on tapes as well as on disks. The records can be of varying lengths. However, their main disadvantages are records can only be accessed in a sequence. They do not support updating operation in place and do not support interactive applications. The second type of files are the random access files. These files are stored in such a manner that it is possible to read data directly from it without passing through the intervening records. The main advantages of these files include records can be accessed randomly, they are well suited for interactive applications, and they support updating operation in place. While some of its disadvantages include they can only be stored on disks. They involve more overhead in the form of maintenance indexes. Handling is a bit complex as compared to sequential files, and records can only be of fixed length. Number three are the text files. Data is stored in form of ASCII cones, irrespective of the data type, and are manipulated by a text editor. They are mostly used as program files and report files. Number four are the binary files. Data is stored in the same way as it is stored in memory, irrespective of the data type. Data is stored in binary format. The way the file is opened for processing normally determines whether a file is a text file or a binary file. Number five are the input files. These files can only be read from by a program. The sixth type are the output files. These ones are written by the program. That is the program that created them. The seventh type are the input output files. These are files that can both be read from and be written into by the program. The mode of opening a particular file determines how various details of the file are handled. Let's now look at file organization techniques. File organization refers the way the files are physically arranged on a storage device. Further, there may be a single key or multiple keys associated with the file. Therefore, based on its physical storage and the keys used to access records, files can be classified either as sequential files relative or random files, or as indexed sequential files. So the three main file organization methods are sequential, random, and indexed sequential. 
The many factors that influence the choice of particular file organization for a given application are the economy of storage, convenience of updates, ease of retrieval, reliability, security, and integrity. Let's look at sequential file organization. The records are written one after the other in order when the file is created and can be accessed only in that same order in which they were written when the file is used for input. The records are numbered from zero on once. In some cases, records of a sequential file are sorted by the value of some field in each record. The field whose value is used to sort the records is known as sort key. A file pointer is used to indicate the position for commencing the next access of the file. Each time data is read from the file, the file pointer is advanced to the next record to be read. When the data is written to the file, the pointer is similarly advanced to the next deposition. The second organization is relative or random file organization. This provides an effective way to access individual records directly. In a relative file organization, there is a predictable relationship between the key and the record's location in the file. When a relative file is established, the relationship that will be used to translate between key value and the physical address is designated. When a record is to be written into a relative file, the mapping function is used to translate the record's key to an address which indicates where the record is to be stored. When the record for a particular key is to be retrieved, the mapping function is applied to that key value, translating it to the address where the record can be found. Therefore, the predictable relationship between records key values and records storage locations is used both when a record is stored and when the record is received. The third method of organization is indexed sequential file organization. This is an effective way of organizing records when there is need both to access sequentially by some key value and also to access the records individually by some key. An index sequential file combines the access types that are supported by a sequential file and a relative file. One way to think of a structure as index sequential file is an index with pointers in a sequential file. An index is used to service a request for access to a particular record and the sequential data file alone is used to support sequential access to the entire collection of records. Its advantages include, one, records can be accessed sequentially and randomly, so two, it supports interactive as well as bunch-oriented applications. Three, it supports updating operation in place. However, some of its disadvantages are, one, can only be stored on disks. It involves more overhead in the form of maintenance of indexes. Records can only be of fixed length. Let's now look at file design. To facilitate the retrieval of specific records from a file, at least one field in each record is chosen as a record key. A record key identifies a record as belonging to a particular person or entity. A file is usually viewed as a sequential stream of bytes. Each field ends with either an end of file marker or at a specific byte number recorded in a system maintained administrative data structure. When a file is opened, 
a stream is associated with a file. Three files and their associated streams are automatically opened when a program execution begins. These are the standard input, the standard output, and the standard error. Streams provide communication channels between files and the programs. Opening a file returns a pointer to a file structure that contains information used to process the file. Generally, contents of a file are organized in form of records composed of a set of fields, and each field is composed of a set of characters or bytes. Each character is made up of a set of 80 bits. Congratulations for going through section one of this topic. You can continue to section two of two in this topic in the next part of the series. Congratulations, therefore, for learning section one of two in the topic file handling. You can also access sections two to two of this topic, other topics in the computer structure and the programming unit, as well as other computer or ICT videos by clicking or tapping on MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel below this video. You can also visit MLSWAP Life Skills YouTube channel for free life skills, motivational and inspirational resources. To subscribe to this channel, tap on subscribe button below this video in YouTube if it's not currently reading as subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write to us through the email mdswap at gmail.com. Let's meet in the next part of this series, which is section two of two of this topic. Thank you very much for listening to me and God bless.